this episode, we're going to talk about how best to use your figures on the math section. Now, it's ideal if you can do the real math, but this will come in handy sometimes when you're running low on time, or actually you did the real math but want to see if your answer made sense, or you're feeling stuck and want to make an educated guess. So let's have a look at how you can use your figures. First off, there are two kinds of figures. There are inaccurate figures, and they're always going to be labeled so you will know when you see them because it says, note, figure not drawn to scale. When you get inaccurate figures, you could consider redrawing them and then using your redrawn figure to draw inferences from. And then, on the other hand, we have accurate figures. They aren't labeled. So at first it might be confusing, but just get used to the idea that if a figure doesn't say it's not drawn to scale, you automatically know that it is drawn to scale. And when you have a figure like that, you can use it to estimate things like angles, area, and length. Let's have a look at a few examples so you can see this in action. So here we are with an example of estimating angles. Now, like I said, ideally you would do this using real math, and I recommend that. But let's say you're stuck, you're running out of time, or you just want to check and see if your answer makes sense. Then you can estimate. So first off, we have a diagram, and it doesn't say, note, figure not drawn to scale, so we automatically know it is drawn to scale. And that means that what we see is what we get. So the question says, what's the value of x? In other words, how big are these angles? So we can estimate right off the diagram if we have to. Now, one way to do this is to compare x to 90 degrees. So I'm going to draw a 90 degree angle right here. Then I'm going to split it in half, because I know what 45 is like. It's half that. And then if I look at this, I'm like, well, it looks like I could fit three x's into that 45 degree angle. So that must mean that each x is 15 degrees. That's my best guess. Now the right answer might be a little different from that, but I think it's right around 15. And sure enough, if I look at the answer choices, 15 is an answer choice, so that sounds really appealing. 20 is also an answer choice, and that's pretty close, so I might also consider that. But C, D, and E seem pretty far off, given that I know that my figure is drawn to scale. So at this point, I can make an educated guess, and I may not necessarily get it right, but I hope you remember that if you can eliminate one answer choice, you should guess. So either way, it's worth guessing. And my best guess is A, 15, that also turns out to be the right answer. Let's look at another example of one of these where we estimate angles. This one's a little different because the figure is not drawn to scale. So what that means is we're going to want to consider redrawing it so that we can draw conclusions based on an accurate diagram instead of this inaccurate diagram. So first off, I need lines L and M to be parallel, which they're not quite in the original. And then I need this angle here to be 75, which is not quite in the original. It looks pretty darn close to 90 degrees there. So I'm going to slant it a little more. So this is 75 degrees now. It's more accurate. And I want to make this so that this is y and this is 2y. In other words, this angle should be twice as big, which is definitely not happening in the original. So I want to break this angle up so that there are two parts here and one part here. So I'm going to do my best to do that. And this is what you should do in your test booklet. Hmm, that doesn't look quite right, so let me try that one again. Let's try a little more like 2 to 1. Let's see, a little more like this. Okay, now it looks a little more like I could fit two angles here and one angle there. It's a little better. All right, so the question is, what's the value of y? Well, let's see. 